Well, now I would like to introduce, this is her idea, Mashable's director of awesome, uh, Christina Warren. Thank you. Director of awesome, I, uh, I'm, I'm trying to make that stick. So, you know, Pete, Sharon, let, let's, uh, let's, let's get that official. <laughs> My name is Christina Warren, and I report on a number of things for Mashable, including the mobile and entertainment spaces. And in a moment, I'm going to be joined by Sabrina Calori and Lisa Shaw, who will be talking with me about social TV. Lisa is the executive vice president of Bravo Digital Media, and she oversees Bravo's digital businesses, including BravoTV.com, TelevisionWithoutPity.com, and um, there are other digital initiatives, and she's responsible for innovations like the InfoFrame, which was the first technology to make um, both on-air programming and commercials interactive, and the Talk Bubble, which is the first real-time viewing party app for um, social TV. Bravo Now, which was also the first tablet app to really kind of, and smartphone app to bring fans into the TV experience. Sabrina is the director of marketing and social media at HBO, and she has a deep command of digital across social media, doing stuff like SEO, publicity, as well as mobile and emerging media. And at HBO, she's responsible for over 50 properties on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, and has dramatically increased HBO's social media presence. This is a really exciting opportunity for us to talk with, with these um, two ladies. And I'm really excited about it because after more than 60 years on the air, television is still one of the most powerful forces in all of media. It eclipses the radio, it eclipses newsprint, and Frankly, it eclipses the web, but things are changing, and for TV to be relevant in another 60 years or even another 10, it's going to have to get more social. So it's possible that the social tools we experiment with today might end up being the saviors of TV in the future. So I'll be moderating the conversation, and um, we look forward to hearing questions from you at the end. So let's start by welcoming out Lisa and Sabrina. You sit here and here. Okay. Yeah. Actually, my clicker. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Welcome. Thanks, you guys, for uh, for joining us. Um, so, I guess I'm just going to want to open this up by discussing the the latest Nielsen data. So. Last week, Nielsen released a report that indicated for the first time in 17 years that TV ownership is on the decline. And this is interesting for a number of reasons, because we know that content is being consumed by more people online and in other ways. So it's not like we're consuming less content, but yet fewer people own TVs. So what are your thoughts on this? And, and does it mean anything, or does it match any information that you've seen at Bravo from your ratings, demographics, or at HBO? Well, I think the actual, it, after that study came, there was quite a lot of uh, debate about it. Right. And, and a lot of people said that it had to do with the digital conversion of homes. So I, I personally don't actually buy that statistic. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think the HBO, for us, the HBO consumer is um, an entertainment enthusiast. And I think they um, are more and more, our own research are tell telling us that they're buying flat screen TVs and they're... Um, creating these sort of home theater experiences. They're, you know, indexed highly for tablets. And so I think for us, you know, being a premium subscription brand, we're sort of even more insulated from that particular study. So Gotcha. So for, for your two markets, for Bravo and HBO respectively, that doesn't necessarily match what you're seeing. And, no. and Lisa, you think that possibly it might be more of a representation of how they're not necessarily getting the right sorts of, of metrics? Of, of data. I of mean, data. I, I'm just repeating what the, you know, right. what the, I really have no insight into it, but I was reading what I was, I was reading. Just, I just, you know, wanted to bring that up since I thought that was kind of an interesting yeah. study. But, you know, both, both of your brands um, have long histories of, of having interactive websites. I mean, I remember, and this was years before Bravo bought television without pity. I remember using it when it was Mighty Big TV. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and I remember being on, on HBO forums for, for Oz and, and Sex in the City. You know, so these, these are, uh, you know, Bravo's had podcasts and that sort of thing going well back, you know, a, a decade. So um, can you tell me a little bit about what you're doing specifically? With, with Bravo and kind sure. of what your social TV strategy is? Um, basically, I'd say our social strategy has really evolved. Um, you know, it really started, I would say, five or six years ago when we had the show Project Runway. Mm -hmm. And so I was new to the job. I came from news. There's so many people here who come from news. It's fascinating how social media and mm -hmm. the news people all can see who come. So, so um, and we did a vote. And I said, well, why don't we just vote with SMS to see if you, who they think would win Project Runway? And no one even used SMS with TV shows. 
and we had hundreds of thousands of dollars of, uh, of 100,000 of votes, all of whom were willing to pay 99 cents to do so. And this was in 2006. And I just thought, wow, here's a really interesting opportunity. And then when Twitter came along in 2007, we said, well, why don't we have some of the top chefs just tweet along? Mm -hmm. And um, within a couple of weeks, uh, tens of thousands of Twitter followers, which at the time was actually a pretty big number. So then gradually we just kept on doing experiments like that and realized we built up to be the highest two screen, multiple screen viewer of any television network. So, and then we already had this very social network. So if you kind of re recall historically during the election, Current did that thing where people tweeted along during the election. And then during the Obama um, mm -hmm. inauguration, all my friends were like Facebooking, like I'm proud, I'm this, I'm that. And so then, like, you know, where did Bravo idea come from? I wish I could tell you he had these really deep brainstorm meetings, but basically it was me and the head of marketing in a hallway conversation. And I kind of said, well, what if, like, you could talk to the celebrities? And it's exactly what the woman from TV Guide was saying yesterday. We have an audience where they want to reply directly to the celebrity. So we decided two and a half years ago to try this, what we called at the time virtual viewing party, which I didn't even know it was social TV, and no one had ever actually combined Twitter and Facebook together and really be able to bring the fans into a party. So we tried that. Once again, it was sort of like Project One Way, and like, okay, well, let's see if this works. The response was tremendous. And what I usually find is that the viewers are usually ahead of us, and it's us catching up to them. So, you know, we've sort of, you know, built that whole thing out, and really people love talking with talent. And then when the iPad came out, again, we sort of the same hallway conversation, like, well, what if you used an iPad to be like a co-viewing app when you watched it? So once we just hired, like, this gaming firm we were working with, we had no idea what we were doing. So we released the first co-viewing app, and, and that's been a really interesting experience. And now, what we do with all these things, we sort of iterate and iterate, and both these things were really around live TV, because, you know, TV people all want to drive live ratings. And um, so, of course, that wasn't good enough. So now I was like, okay, well, what about if we do something like 24-7? And like, <laughs> there was like that cool Twitter tracker with the Olympics, and like, you learn that all the Wall Street people were watching, um, what's that called, like, shuffle? What's in the, on the, where they push the thing on the ice? Yeah, 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 yeah. Curling. 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 So all curling was the most popular thing during the day. And I was like, well, let's try doing that around shows so we can have a conversation around shows and talent 24-7. So, th so that's sort of how we evolved our, our, our social strategy. And you know, now we're playing around with like ha hashtags and I think it's still really evolving. Great, and I think uh, you guys have a video. Yes, we're gonna show a video, but I have to apologize. <laughs> when they said, do you have a video? Like, we don't really have a video of our social TV. So what we did is you're gonna see our um, Emmy. We, we're like Susan Lucci. We've been nominated five or six times and we've never won. So now this is, <laughs> it's due next week. This is the two minutes that shows the social TV. So. When I heard the narration, I almost died. It's, it's, the, it's the Bravo narrator, so he's really selling. But just remember, it's because it's we're trying to win this award. It's so Bravo, and it's, it's not fun. for the mashable audience, so I apologize for being a little over the top. <laughs> 2010 was a breakthrough year for Top Chef. We took storytelling and interactivity to the next level on every platform, helping to dish up the most engaged Top Chef audience ever. It's a whole new ballgame. Top Chef has a new guest on the show, The Fan whose two-way conversation with the show changed the definition of interactivity. 2010 was the year of the tablet, and we were the first TV network with a co-viewing companion iPad app, Bravo Now, a game-changing dual-screen experience. During the show, Bravo Now's active timeline gives fans exclusive extras like producer comments on what happened behind the scenes, comments from the Bravo celebrities, and photos from the set. Plus, fans can access bonus videos to share with friends, blogs, and other real-time tweets and Facebook posts throughout the week. To keep the real-time conversation going around the clock, we partnered with Twitter to create another first, the social media hub at Bravo TV, a three-part breakthrough innovation. First, the innovative tweet tracker tracks the buzz and curates fans' conversations around shows and talent. Fans can filter the conversation through emotive keywords like one. Second, to help fans get the conversation started, Just Saying offers topical hashtags, which prompts fans to dish on the drama. Here's what fans had to say using hashtag why my all-star will win. Third, fans stepped into the ring with tweet battles, a new way to battle it out with other fans and create their own Top Chef-inspired debates. Over a million fans joined in. This year, Bravo's pioneering real-time water cooler, the Talk Bubble, hosted the biggest event yet. On more platforms than ever for the Top Chef finale. 
Fans join the judges, chef testants, and Bravo celebrities to tweet and connect via Facebook during the finale show, on the web, on mobile, and through the new Bravo Now app. And for the first time, saw their comments on air, displayed on real-time tweet billboards. The fan participation not only fueled the conversation, delivering top trending terms and tens of thousands of tweets, but also delivered a 10% ratings boost solely attributed to social media. Only by Bravo. Sorry, you see, he was a little over the top. <laughs> Oh, that was great. That was really, really good. All right, so how have uh, HBO recently launched the HBO Go app, mm -hmm. which is uh, for you guys who aren't familiar, if you're an HBO subscriber with select cable companies, you can watch basically every HBO show ever. You can also watch movies, get more content than on demand. It's a really slick experience. You guys have already had over a million downloads. Yep. It's doing really, really well. Thank you. And, and I have to say, I'm, I'm a big fan of it, but you know, you have a huge success with that. What else are you doing to better embrace social TV? And, and maybe you can tell us about some of the new stuff you have planned. Sure. So um, when we think about social TV, we are um, very, very active in social media from a marketing perspective. Um, and one of the things, sort of two themes that have come up, I think, here over and over in the last couple of days that have been really um, on top of mind for us is um, curation mm -hmm. and connections. So I think the biggest challenge that we've seen is that there's so much social conversation happening. There's so much social media um, being created by fans, by stars, by talent, um, that it's kind of impossible to follow along with everything. And so we were thinking about how can we provide you know, a curated brand experience for super fans of our programs. Um, and then the other thing, oddly, connect, mash and connect, um, that we were thinking about is, you know, um, Christy said it yesterday about that breaking down of the fourth wall. Um, we've really been thinking about what's the right user experience to provide to consumers to allow people to connect with the brand, um, connect with the programming, connect with other fans of the programming, and then finally to connect with the talent. Um, and I think we've looked at what a lot of the other networks have been doing out there, including Bravo. And I think that the challenge that you know we found is that um, if you're if you're not a if you're a voyeur, right? Which we know that there's a there's a huge amount of people out there who would never um, tweet at a star, but would love to follow along with the conversation. Um, what's been created so far has been. Um, you know, unless you understand Twitter, has been hard to digest, you know, unless you're a social media superstar like the people in this room. Um, and so we've thought about all of that, and admittedly, where this is an experimental phase for us, but um, we are going to give the Mashable Connect audience a preview of something that we're going to be launching in the next couple of weeks um, called HBO Connect. Um, and so this is the, the first kind of sneak peek of that experience that we'll be launching soon. Very cool. I've never seen you at the water cooler before. I've never had HBO before. Carnival <laughs> seems like a parable of the age-old struggle between good and evil. Yeah. Who didn't get water? Oh, goody. It's when the fight's a man for real. I don't want him to know what I can do. What are you doing with marijuana in my Viagra bottle? <laughs> Page six would have a field day.
Exactly. That's very cool. So see, you guys are really kind of taking a big step into bringing people into social TV. So let me actually ask you a question. So, you know, what's the real value for HBO from social TV? Because for some networks, it might be, and, and, and I'd love to get Bravo's perspective too, because you're coming from two different angles. You know, your right. premium cable subscription, people subscribe to HBO, you are, are much more based directly on advertisers. So is the goal for HBO to get people to tune in um, live to the show, or does it matter how people consume the content as long as they subscribe to HBO? It's funny, we've actually asked um, our users if they would um, want us to live tweet during a first run, a premiere of a show, and we know actually from that feedback that um, our content is a lean back experience. Um, they don't wanna be interrupted when they're watching True Blood on Sunday night at nine. Like, they don't want a social TV experience. They wanna be immersed in the programming. Um, however, so a lot of the Connect, there's a live commentary piece of Connect, but that'll happen on replays or on on-demand experiences and things like that. For us, we really feel like, you know, social media in aggregate, not just so social TV, you know, a, a consumer or a viewer who engages with us in social is a better consumer. They're a more engaged consumer, and because of that, they're less likely to turn on their subscription, right? So when True Blood is over, um, they're more likely to try out Game of Thrones and not just, you know, cancel their HBO subscription and wait till next year when their favorite show comes back. So that's really, you know, moving, moving people from passive viewership to brand ambassador is really the goal of what we do in social media every day. And, and with, with Bravo, is the goal with social TV to get more people to tune in live? Does it matter as much if they're what do you I mean if they're watching content on their iPad or if they're watching it, you know, on, on you know online on the websites, uh, is there value in that, or is really the goal to kind of to get people to tune in live or to, or to repeat? I'd say our social TV strategy, which is basically a constantly moving target and just right. evolves all the time. I would say number one is. I look at it as a pure digital experience for the user. So number one, it's got to be a great digital experience for the user. That's an entire process. It's like um, Christy was saying yesterday, it's really about before, during, and after. It's, mm -hmm. it, and in our case, they like the during. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, also, uh, it has to help grow the audience. So that could be digital audience. But in, in this case, you know, we, it's, it was a huge effort, but we did real research that showed that it gave this 10% lift in ratings. So it was driving on-air ratings. I, now, I, we had, that test was, in fairness, done almost a year ago. So now that everybody's doing it, I'd be interested in doing it again. It's just a huge amount of labor to do so. Sure. That's why we haven't done it again. And then third, I have to be able to monetize it. I run a P&L, a for-profit mm -hmm. business. Um, so it has to be appealing to sponsors. And what I found sort of you know, heading up Bravo Digital, since we have this reputation for innovation, being ahead and having the new shiny toy, the advertisers inevitably want to be partners with you because they're like, ooh, let's see the learnings we can learn and how we can help our, our, our advertiser run it. So the advertiser in our case is critical. And, 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 and often we have to help figure out for the advertiser what is the best way to be integrated in social TV. So for instance, in that sort of talk bubble thing where people are just talking on Facebook and Twitter, Sometimes the sponsor came up with a great idea. We had Sonic was a sponsor, and they um, they had a car hop. They're like a sandwich shop in the Midwest or something, and they had the car hop tweet along during the Real Housewives of New York City finale, yeah. and it was really very organic to the experience itself. So sometimes a lot of it's just discovery with your cool. partner. That so so th it could actually be a, a pretty good opportunity, I guess, for advertisers, especially as people are wanting to maybe shift around from pure TV advertising to digital advertising, yes. to use this as an opportunity to say, hey, you can get in on this too, in addition to keeping, you know, keep yes. Bravo more, more viable. That's very interesting. You know, one of the things I think that Bravo does so well, and, and obviously that HBO is going to be doing with, with HBO Connect, but I think Bravo really excels at this, is getting the talent to participate online. Yeah. And, 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 you know, yesterday Christy was talking about how she thinks in the future it'll be a contractual thing where, where stars will yeah. be required to tweet or required to be social. But, you know, how do you handle that? How, how are you able to kind of handle the, the outreach and, and, and still monitor brand quality while keeping, without kind of muzzling, you know, these, these characters right. and these people that are so crucial to your network? I mean, I think especially in the case of Bravo, where you have these really large personalities and, and you don't want to mute that, but how do you still keep things without, you know, becoming um, maybe a story that, that you don't want it to be? Right, well, they're, the, the, it really helps that Bravo's a reality television network. So a lot of these people, 
before they're on Bravo, they're not that well known. Right. So they really okay. see it as their own platform to get out. And so, you know, in the beginning when we first did it two years ago, like we were teaching the Real Housewives how to tweet, they had no idea. Well, then, you know, then they started like, oh, and I don't have time, you know. So then uh, we figured out like, okay, well, we'll put like a little thing at the bottom, like all the Real Housewives and how many followers they have. Well, that uh, motivated me. Uh, that's <laughs> genius. So, you know, you just have to understand that, and, and also explain to them, because it took a process for them to understand that this is helpful to your brand. So, and they've been very good. And I have to say, the, um, the audience, because I was really afraid it would go haywire during the show, and suddenly people would go off on some weird, inappropriate conversation. Right. And then we, you know, so we have all these moderators standing by. <laughs> We've hardly had any incidences. Their people are there because they're true fans and they really are having a fan experience. That's really interesting. I think that's so smart that you had the, you know, how many followers they have. And that's, that's way better than trying to say, oh, but you have to do this, just, just make it a contest. That's genius. Yeah. How is HBO going to, to look at maybe using some of your big personalities? You know, Ricky Gervais has his animated show, Bill Maher is obviously you know, a great personality. Maybe leveraging some of that to, to build back and bring back to the connected TV experience and to the HBO Connect experience. Yeah, so, I mean, two ways that we're looking at it, um, which are key to connect um, and what's on connect, there are two pieces, two ways that you can connect with talent on that site. One is a live Q&A experience, which the talent does not have to have a Twitter. We, we actually, in the last year, we've seen a lot more of our talent coming on Twitter, but before that, you know, we actually had very few stars who were out there tweeting um, on their own, you know, and, and I think if it's a publicist doing it for them, it's not, it doesn't really hold up in the same way. Um, so they don't, um, for the live Q&A and Connect, they don't have to have a Twitter or a Facebook, and we've already seen a lot of um, interest from talent wanting to participate with us, and we have some, some good stars lined up for that. And then the other way, actually, um, I wish that I could say that Howard Stern live tweeting private parts on some Saturday afternoon was my brilliant idea. It was not. It was Howard Stern's crazy idea. He saw, and if you hadn't seen this, um, you should because it's funny as shit what he wrote, but he basically saw private parts as playing on HBO, as we often do, like over and over and over again. <laughs> um, and he you know, had joined Twitter like two days before um, and decided, hey, wouldn't it be cool if I could do some live commentary while, while the movie's playing? And he like jumped on and did it. And actually we found out because fans started tweeting at us like, hey, HBO, do you realize what Howard Stern's doing for you right now? And you know, um, so we're like, what is he doing for us? You know, it's Saturday afternoon, I'm at home, like, like what? Um, and so I looked and we're like, wow, this is actually pretty brilliant. But the problem was, is that the next day, all the blogs cover, covered it, and we looked around and we're like, okay, if you heard about this the next day and you wanted to go back when we aired Private Parts the next time and follow along with what he had written, you couldn't because I love Twitter, they're a great partner of, our, of ours, but the, the UI, like all his tweets had been pushed all the way down the page. There's no way to follow. There's no way to follow. And HuffPost, um, did an amazing thing that we thought, wow, that's pretty brilliant, where they took screenshots of all the tweets and they put them in a slideshow so that you could click forward on them. So if you wanted to watch the movie, you could, and then you could just you know, go to HuffPost and click forward. And we thought, wow, that's, like, that's the right user interface, we think, um, and that's so damn simple that we should build that into Connect. So that's the other piece of Connect that we think is going to be really fun, and um, we're looking at a bunch of uh, talent now to kind of come on and do that sort of similar type experience, whether that's behind the scenes talent or you know the actual actors. Um, so th those are the ways that we're trying to harness harness our talent um, for social, and um, we'll see. Hopefully, some of you will follow along. No, that that's really cool. No, I love the Howard Stern thing, and I think that building that into the experience, which works so well for HBO, which does replay things over and over again, and and where people can be more inclined to set their own schedule. That's a that's a really unique approach. So I wanted to ask, and you know, Lisa, since Bravo's been really a leader in this space, what are some of the strategies that you've tried that maybe haven't worked as well? Because you know, we always talk about the successes, and that's valuable, but I think sometimes it's more valuable to look at what hasn't worked and maybe why. I, I honestly can't think of something along the social structure that really hasn't worked. I think what we figured out, though, along the way was what so many people have been saying the last two days. Like, for instance, like we didn't think to put the tweets on air till about halfway through. Okay. Like we're just doing it, it was just this online experience and we're promoting and telling people to go to a place. The minute we started saying, you have the opportunity, you are part of the experience, and put these little billboards on where it's like, you know, Christy, you know, at Christy Tomer said so and so. And then all of a sudden you'd look at it and people are like, oh my God, they just featured my tweet on air. And then suddenly you'd watch the, you know, the trend report go like this. So you suddenly realize that that's a real sort of motivator. Um, I'm trying to think 
what, what didn't work. I, I, I mean, I, I still feel one of the things we, we need to work on is, um, well, first of all, we just need to understand how it's all going to fit into the total picture. But um, what was I going to say? Oh, curate, the, the, you know, still the Twitter, all, I'm just speaking about Twitter, the algorithm is such that the most, even with cloud and all the tools, you're not getting the best tweets on top. Okay. And so I think that's just something that we all have to work on. Twitter's working on it. Um, because you really want the ones that are prominent. And during the Oscars, they did another sort of simple thing. New York Times just pulled the best tweets mm -hmm, and yeah. stuck them up there for you. So, you know, but sometimes during these shows, it happens so fast, you're getting, you know, 400 tweets a minute that it's basically impossible to, to, to see it and it's an after experience. So um, I, I think that is something we really need to work on is how to get the best content up at the top. You know what I think is so interesting you say about that is that we're talking in the context of, of television and entertainment, but that's a problem that people have across industries of trying to get the best content and the right context from these social channels. And it's a real problem, yeah, and it's something definitely. that people, I think, struggle with across industries. And I think that's really, really interesting because you're putting it in a perspective that I hadn't even considered. You know, most of the time when, when we're covering things at Mashable, it's maybe from, from a brand page perspective or, or people trying to you know, do something more static, but that makes tons of sense right. when you're having things on live TV. And, and another thing is that just to recognize, I mean, no offense to the audience and all of us here, but social TV is just part of the equation. Absolutely. So social TV is just part. Now I feel like in 2011, I, I'm per really focused on transmedia and telling stories across platforms and making it so it lifts engagement, not only across every platform, but uh, of the return to the advertiser. So it's like social TV is a part of that. And I really think that social, social is a part of the storytelling equation, but it's only part of it. Of course. I mean, and it ultimately is, has, to, has to drive back. The story has to be there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've got to have the content, um, I think, first and foremost. And that's what Christy was getting at yesterday before we can have any of this other stuff. Um, now, you were saying that when you last did a study about a year ago that you found that your social engagement had raised your ratings 10%, which is huge. And, right. and, and that's a very interesting correlation. I know that HBO, I don't know what, how much research you've done, but have you seen, have you know, people been more willing to, to continue to, to subscribe? Has, has your rates, um, I guess, improved at all with you know, using partnerships like GitGlue or, or being more interactive on Twitter? I mean, I'll be honest, we've done studies and we've looked at you know, our, our um, brand loyalty and, and likely, are you more, more or less likely to you know, subscribe based, if, based on whether or not you interact with us? But I, I kind of think we do those to pat ourselves on the back. Um, I, thankfully for me, um, you know, I'm not in ad supported. I don't have a PNL. And so you know, I'm just like out there playing with the fans, trying to make the fans happy. And, and um, you know, I think we do that. And I, I, I don't know, I, we, I think studies that correlate ratings to social media are, are flawed right now. I, I don't really think there's a, there's a true way to isolate social media from yeah, the marketing mix. You Absolutely. know, like it's, social media is just another way of word of mouth. And mm -hmm. that's always been historically, you know, really challenging to measure. Um, you know, what I can say is that Game of Thrones ratings are increasing every week right now. And we do think that, you know, there has, and this is of course what I think, that, you know, the fact that we engaged the core audience, you know, the core fan base very early on um, and made them brand ambassadors and that they're continuing every week to tell people to tune into the show, that that is helping. Now, I can't say that that's social media, that's word of mouth. And I think social media is just sort of the gasoline thrown on top of that. Um, but it can have the opposite effect, you know. Right. The, the film guys yesterday were saying, like, it's true. Social can kill you as fast as it can make you. And so, you know, I think I think we're just um, we're hoping when we have great content that we're pouring the right, you know, gasoline on that fire and uh, and letting it letting, you know, the fans do the work for us. Awesome. Well, you know, we have a couple of minutes left. I would love to take some questions uh, from the audience. If, if you guys have questions, we've got two microphones here and here. So if you guys just want to come up and ask questions, uh, we've got a couple of minutes. That'd be fantastic. Hi. Is this on? Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Hi, I'm from, uh, I'm, my name is Philip Vasquez. I'm from Samsung's product innovation team. And so we always talk about working directly with content providers and content creators, and that gets us really excited. And we do. Um, and uh, from a product innovation standpoint, you know, we're, we're not just thinking about apps, but we're thinking about how to transform the actual products that we make, too. And I guess my question for you guys, outside of a formal business setting where we're, you know, sitting at opposite sides of the conference table, 
I just wanted to know what gets you guys most excited about, uh, what, what you guys get most excited about from a device and service uh, perspective. Well, I mean, we're, we're, we're building a, a connected um, TV device uh, app with Samsung now. Mm -hmm. And if you actually, we, we finally built a lab so we get to see all the connected TVs. So you see the Samsung, you see Google Apps, you see Yahoo. And it's just such baby steps now. Is there really promotional little video clips? It's like nothing. And the idea of what it can be, I'm just like, I want to get that beachfront real estate now. Because it's so limiting now. But if with in working with like a Samsung, hopefully we can involve, we're actually speaking to is a Hai Kung Lee, the head of your app store in, in Korea. Mm -hmm. Next week we had our little disconnect where she thought Pacific and Eastern time were the same time. But, when, but, um, <laughs> but it was like, uh, I think like working with them and really figuring out like the connected apps are nowhere where they should be. Right. And what is the best usage? Like, I'm sort of putting social TV into it. I'm like, I'm not sure that's the right experience, but only by figuring it out with the, the people. And it seems like you guys are particularly well staffed to do that. It's very exciting. Yeah. I'd agree with that. I mean, I think um, there's been a lot of conversation about putting Twitter streams, you know, um, on the TV next to the actual content and, you know, the bringing social onto the actual television. I think there's. Um, I think what excites me is that there's new user behavior that's going to be created here, and it's kind of a little like the Wild West. I mean, there's, if you think of all of the ways that you can compare, um, pair screens now, you know, you've got mm -hmm. a mobile device, you're, you could be watching on the mobile device, you could be tweeting on your TV, <coughs> like there's just so many different um, opportunities and options. I think, you know, it's a, it's a really fun time to be in this space and to be working with people like Samsung and experimenting and um, seeing what people like and, and what they don't like. Like right now, it's big aggregated experiences because, you know, you just like want to get as many people as possible and try to drive the rating. But I think there's a whole business in watching with your friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like just watching with your core friends. I, I, I'm not particularly focused on at the moment because I have bigger problems to find. But, sure. but I think that there's a whole business to be had amongst, it's like little parties with people you really want to show. It's sort of like how Facebook, you don't really want to talk to your 500 friends, you really actually want to talk to your like 10 like friends. Five friends. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I second that. I think That's the cool true. thing is like HBO, um, TV has always been social, right? But the difference is, is that now you can be social with people that aren't in the same room as you. And we haven't even tapped that yet. I don't no. think anyone's really no, started really to, haven't. And to do that. No, and I think there's huge opportunities where if I'm in my apartment in Brooklyn and my mom is at home in Atlanta, right. and we could have a, a shared experience together just like when we used to live in the same place and we'd, we'd get together on Sunday nights to watch Sex in the City. Yep. Like, I think that right. there's a real future in that. And the real challenge is how to create a frictionless experience for the yeah. person like yes. your ca customer who just wants to sit back or for people who want to be super people engaged, who want to be super how do you involved. not, like at CES once I saw this device which was like, each one of you got like a different um, remote and you, you allowed yes. to have the different experience and like, I don't know if it really worked, it was a few years ago, but it sounded so cool. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I have a question uh, for Lisa since you have a, an ad supported business model. What's up Lisa? Um, <laughs> so our, first I, I'm curious as to whether or not you're able to uh, report social media metrics to advertisers. And uh, if you are doing that, what type of metrics are you showing to advertisers to show them that people are more uh, engaged in, in the, their ads as they're watching your content? And uh, yeah, I'm just interested if, if, that's, <laughs> if that's a play. And are they biting on yeah. it? You know, are, they, are, they, yeah. are you able to say, hey, I've got this show. People are super engaged. Yeah. People are, are really stoked about your ad. They're tweeting about it. Buy some more. Yeah. Are they? Are they balking at that, or how's that affecting ad sales? Oh my God! Uh, or if anyone has the answer to that question, please come see me immediately. <laughs> so I would say it's very much an evolving space. We still struggle with our own social media metrics. You know, we're still stuck with like you know page views, and you know we you know we hire those companies like um, Radiant Six just got sold mm -hmm. and Trender, et cetera, who can give you sort of like who are your most prominent people, what are they are, how you could turn them into brand ambassadors. So there's that. But with advertisers, you know, so we give them all those stats, of course. But then with advertisers, it, it, what's working now is the hard things, like how many people got the coupon and activated the code? Right. How many people downloaded so-and-so? And you know, how many people retweeted X? It, it has to be very simple now. I think the potential is huge, but I don't know. I don't know, maybe you guys are, but we're definitely not there yet. Yeah, I think, I think that's a big challenge for a lot of people is trying to get the analytics and, and try to find correlation points. And, and, but, but there's obviously huge potential yes. in being able to um, get that information, I think. 
Hi, I'm Nikki. Short. Um, actually, Lisa, you were just talking about connecting fans with celebrities, and I tweeted at um, Andy Cohen that you were speaking, and he responded saying that you're a genius, which is a really <laughs> big deal for me because I love He's Andy Cohen. Genius, so. <laughs> um, but I was actually an intern at BravoTV.com, um, and I was doing the web analytics. So I was a person you that. You were doing was, what? I was doing web analytics and also oh. tracking the social media. So I was yeah. actually going through Twitter searches and counting the mentions. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, I, it was definitely a lot of numbers, but I, I love Bravo. I'm a huge fan, so it was really great. I was wondering, you know, with an internal NBC Universal perspective, if people have reached out to you and the other brands have reached out to you asking for advice because Bravo Digital has been so successful and I've never really seen a company or a television network be so amazing when it comes to connecting to fans and, and social media. So I was wondering if NBC or anyone else has reached out to you. Um, this is such an awkward question. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, like, I like it, Craig. I, 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 I can't really say, say the truth, but yes, all the brands have reached out to us. And of course, as you guys all know, social media is very personal to a brand. So when the Weather Channel reached out to me, which is not, it's like a semi-partner to NBCU, I was like, you know, it was just off the top of my head. And I was just like, well, you know, you could do, this is a few, this is like a year ago. I was like, well, you could do, why don't you have real-time people saying what's happening in Sacramento, what the weather is in Atlanta, because it's one thing to have a report, it's another thing to just put a real-time feed. And then, well, you could do like crazy weather badges with Foursquare. And I mean, this is literally me. And then he's like, can you come? Like, and then suddenly I sort of honestly felt like I was, I, I had to put a stop to it at a certain extent. So it's, it's fun. But at the same time, it's not my job. Right. My, my job is to make Bravo work. So um, luckily, people like you know, Craig and other people here were really collegial, and we share information. And I'm already like, working on my Twitter feed based on like, Craig's like, you can do it. I'm like, I don't have the time. So, <laughs> so we all share information. But um, you know, and, and what's great is it's such a large organization. Everybody's doing something different, and you can learn from each other. Thank you. Well, uh, Sabrina and Lisa, thank you both so much for taking this time to speak with us. This has been really, really uh, illuminating, I think, for me. And, and I, I love this space. I love to write about it. And I, I look forward to seeing where this is all going in the future. Great. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you, guys.